I guess we're live. Okay. We're live. We'll uh, call the January 20th, 2022 meeting of the Capital Planning Commission to order. Uh, may we have the roll call, please, Lewis? Present. Here. 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 Now, if everyone will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, of the United States, States, States of America. America. To the Republic which is for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Okay, just as a reminder tonight, Kingston Rivera is our technician for the uh, television broadcast. And uh, it appears we're going to have several people weighing in on the meeting tonight for various uh, items on the agenda. And uh, while you can't be physically here, uh, it is open to the public. And uh, there are several methods that you can join in the meeting. And if we could have that screen on line there now, there we go. So you can uh, email comments, uh, you can participate by dialing in. We have another screen to portray, there we go. So you can call in using that 669 number, uh, join the webinar, raise your hand when you're ready to speak. And because we are likely to have numerous people participating in the meeting tonight with comments on various uh, agenda items, we're going to limit uh, comments to three minutes. So if you intend to comment, please uh, gather your thoughts, be succinct, and uh, state what you want to state uh, in the three minutes. Okay, with that, uh, we'll go to oral communications. And the first item under, oh, I'm sorry, it's, that's not it. We're getting rid of me. Uh, at this time, we're, each chair serves for one year. Uh, my time is up. And we're going to be nominating a new chairperson and new vice chair tonight. And so I will open it up for nominations. Hey, I have a nomination. Commissioner Newman? I will nominate uh, Commissioner Wilk for chair. Uh, I'll second that. Commissioner Westman? Okay. We'll take these one at a time. Uh, are there any other nominations for the chairperson? Okay, may we have the roll call, please, Louis? Sure. Commissioner Christensen. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Aye. Okay, congratulations, Mr. Wilk. Uh, since you are now the chair, you can entertain nominations for the vice chair. Well, I will do exactly that. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Ruth. Uh, let's open it now to nominations for vice chair. We'll hear a nomination. I will nominate Commissioner Westman for vice chair. I hear uh, a second. nomination from Commissioner Newman for Commissioner Westman and a second from Commissioner Ruth. Uh, can I have a roll call, please, Louis? Commissioner Christensen. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Hi. Thank okay. you. Well, it is, congratulations. So we have a new chair and vice chair. Let's move on then to item number three, which is oral communication. Katie, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Um, there's 
We did receive additional public comment late this afternoon, I want to say at around 4 p.m., regarding 115 Saxon, which is on the agenda as item 5B. But other than that, um, nothing has changed in terms of additions and deletions to the agenda. Uh, could I ask the uh, commissioners if they had a chance to uh, review that uh, additional uh, input? Yeah. Or anybody who, ha who anybody who hasn't had a chance to look at that letter? No. Okay. So we, we've all had a chance to review that. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead then. And um, does any any of the commissioners have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Well, I, I have a comment, Chairman Will. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, I've been sending uh, informational uh, broadcasts about uh, efforts to uh, repeal SB9. And uh, yesterday I was chastised by the city attorney saying I can't do that, that it could lead to a violation of the Brown Act. I seriously dispute the fact that I can't send information to all the planning commissioners that doesn't result in any action or affects any action. So I told the city attorney that uh, I believe it's no different than a private citizen sending information, the same information to the to the planning commission. I told her I would abide by the uh, uh, her recommendation, although I disagree with it. Uh, so I think a private citizen will probably be sending you that same information. Did you want to add that to the agenda? Well, at some point, I would like the planning commission to take an action supporting the effort uh, to repeal that uh, that state law, but not today. Okay, then let, let's move on then to public comment. Do, do you have any other comments? Uh, other than that, and did you want to talk to Katie about actually putting that on the agenda for next time? Uh, not at this time. Okay, did they, are there any other comments from commissioners? Commissioners okay. or public? Well, since we started with the commission, well, all right, let's, we'll go back to the public comments then. Public comments, uh, <coughs> short communications from the public concerning matters that are not on the agenda. So are there any members of the public who would like to speak on topics that are not on the agenda? Now is your time. Any other, is anyone raising their hand? Let's see, of the attendees on Zoom, there are no hands raised. And I'm going to check the email system next. And no, no emails either. Okay, very good. We'll move on then back to commission comments, which is the uh, item 3C. Are there any other commissioners which would like to speak out at this time? Yes, I, I have a comment, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Rec Chair recognizes Commissioner Newman. I would just like to acknowledge uh, Commissioner Ruth's service as uh, chairman in the past year. Although it was all uh, virtual, um, he did uh, his usual uh, excellent job in uh, running the meetings. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Mr. The good thing was I, I, and I, I didn't confer. have long pants on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Commissioner Westman concurs, as does Chairman Will. Uh, any other comments? There are no other comments that we'd like to move on to the staff comments. The staff have anything they'd like to uh, I, I do. I weigh have in a, on. I have a few items for you tonight. Um, first, I, it's my pleasure to introduce two new Capitola employees. Um, I personally think Capitola is a very special place to work in our small community. And um, it's, it makes it even better when you get to hire great new people and have them join your team. So first I'd like to introduce our Deputy City Clerk, Louise Osumwigi. Uh, Louise comes from the City of San Jose as the Deputy Clerk, Clerk 
legislative secretary. He's worked in election offices at the County of Santa Clara. Before coming to the United States, he served as the Canadian Armed Forces, in the Canadian Armed Forces. He graduated from the Royal Military College of Canada with a Master's of Art degree in International Relations and Strategic Studies. He is fluent in Spanish. He's very happy to move to the Santa Cruz area with his wife, and it's been a pleasure getting to know Luis, and uh, he, Luis, it's yours. Thank you. And we look forward to working with you. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. And uh, so Louise will be joining us and taking minutes at all of our meetings from here on out, and um, it'll be a pleasure. Um, and next, I'd like to introduce you to our new senior planner, Brian Freilich. Um, Brian has over a decade of experience in progressively responsible planning department positions in the Bay Area and most recently worked for eight years in the private sector as a development project manager. So he's worked on both sides of the counter. Uh, we're happy to add this rounded knowledge base and experience to our staff. It has allowed for a fast onboarding, immediate contribution to project processing and a balanced perspective. Brian has always lived in the South Bay and Central Coast regions, growing up in, the, in San Jose and Hollister. He now lives in the Santa Cruz Mountains. He went to school in Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, and has a degree in city and regional planning. So it, it's just been um, a pleasure getting to know Brian, and I'm looking forward to you all getting to know him better as well. He's a true asset to the team. Brian, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, well Thanks, Katie. Thanks for that nice introduction. It's a pleasure to meet uh, the Planning Commission. I've been with the city here for a little over a month and a half, and uh, it's kind of the onboarding's gone really well, but it's, it's come, come pretty fast. Uh, but Sean and Katie are, are such a strong team. I'm really, really blessed to be here. Uh, worked in a couple of very proud communities in Belmont and Los Altos Hills, uh, but I have to say that. Uh, being here in Capitola, one thing I've really recognized is uh, just kind of the, the happy feeling that I get uh, when I interact with residents. And uh, if they, that comes through when I, I, they're taking a visit to the planning department, you know, I think that's, that's really saying something. So uh, thanks again for the intro, and I look forward to serving the community going forward. Thank you, well, Brian. Welcome, welcome yes. Um, Katie, anything else? Yes, I have one more um, update for you. I wanted to let you know that um, AMBAG, it's that time of, uh, uh, it's, we're, we're back into the um, identifying RENA numbers for affordable housing development. Um, we're gonna be updating our, our housing element portion of our general plan. It's due in December of 2023. And so I've been attending planning commit planning director meetings with AMBAG, and the, the board has been meeting to decide on their RENA methodology. Um, in the fifth cycle, which we're now in, we were assigned 146 units for, to um, zone four for affordable housing within the city. Um, the, in 2018, a lot of the legislation for housing changed and had a really big impact on how this six cycle distribution is going to work out. And um, I think it was last week the board met and they passed a new methodology. And under this methodology, Capitola would be assigned 1,300 new units. <laughs> so it, it's, we, we were expecting, I kept hearing three to four times the amount of the first round. So I was prepared for 600. I think I've, I'd been saying at a few meetings. Uh, not we're at about nine times our previous numbers so um, next week i'm going to city council i'm going to launch the uh get our rfp out there for our housing element we're, i i'm thinking this is going to be the year of housing <laughs> and hopefully we get great uh participation from our community members it's going to be we're going to need to involve all all parts of our community and get some really good feedback on where we're going to 
plan for our 1300 new units, but um, <laughs> so we've got our work cut up for us, but I, I just wanted to give you that update and I'll be bringing you updates regularly on that as we launch this process. But planning commission will be very involved throughout. So thank you. It's, it's hard to take that seriously when that's an impossible task. Oh, yeah, I can only take out about 900 roommates myself. <laughs> so does the city have about 4,200 housing units now? That's correct. Yep. So it, it's more that's than a more than a 25% increase in the housing units we have now. It is. Um, there, there's a lot to the formula of how, how they came up with this distribution. It, it's surprising to me they've gone further away from looking at your developable land standards, um, like how much area you actually have to develop. They're looking to put more uh, density within existing cities. And also one of the larger factors um, is equity. And because Capitola has such great resources, we're a resource rich community um, a lot of the uh, places that don't have such great resources, um, I think it was something about like 42% of the um, overall, there's, there's 30,000 units that have to be distributed within our region. And the way the equation breaks down, it's, it's somewhere around like 40, 42% of the, um, you know, uh, of, of regions that have really good facilities, great schools, job opportunities are gonna get the higher numbers um, in this round. So I, I will bring to you the final formula. It's not done yet. Um, at this point, th what the what AMBAG board approved is now goes back to the HCD and they'll provide them with comments and that will come back to the board for a final decision. And then at that point, um, so I'm, I've been tracking it closely and uh, council member Peterson is our person on the board. So she's been doing a great job of uh, representing Capitola and our concerns. But I, as this progresses, I can bring you more information on it. But it is, it's more than a 25% increase in un existing units. So when you say that we are going to be involved, um, you would come to us with um, some zoning recommendations in order to accommodate these 1300 units is that how that would work yeah we part of um, the arena numbers is once we're allocated numbers we need to make sure that we can that we have our, we have sites in which to accommodate these numbers so we have to go through our zoning um, and make sure that we have enough sites zoned to be able to fulfill our arena numbers and there's really strict guidance there of uh, having to meet these deadlines within specific, um, by specific timelines and rezoning your areas within specific timelines to stay compliant with the state. So. What's the penalty if you don't meet their threshold of 1,300 units? Um, we could lose funding. It, it's, it's tied to a lot of the grants that come through. Um, in the past, Doesn't it depend on willing developers? <laughs> so we, 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 like we, we just have need to, plan to allocate the location. We have to plan for it and zone for it. it we don't necessarily have to. Right. We're not always going to find the developers, sure. but there has to be enough opportunity under zoning to not pro, to not get in the way of these developments happening. So. So there will be more. Sorry for the okay. bad news. It was, it's a big number, but, <laughs> but it's not the final number. So we'll see. <clears throat> okay. And, and those are my comments. Um, okay. So no more comments from staff. We're ready to move on to item four, which is the consent calendar. Um, these are items that are taken, uh, approved by the council with one vote. Does anybody wish to take any of these uh, item, item either A or B off the consent calendar and bring them into public hearing. I'd like to pull item B. Okay, Katie, can we pull item B, 1515 Prospect Avenue and bring it into public hearings? Uh, what do you think? Should we put that at the end or at the beginning? Um, Let's put that at the beginning since it's uh, 
since it's probably the first thing on the, in the package. So uh, is everybody okay with just pulling that? Does anybody want to pull 4A? If not, I'm ready to hear a motion for consent calendar item 4A only. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar with 4A only. Okay, we have a second. That's to continue 4A. I'll second yeah. it. Okay, I have a, a uh, motion from Commissioner Westman and a second from Commissioner Ruth. Um, uh, Louis, can we have a roll call vote on the consent calendar? And Chris? Aye. Here? I, I, sorry. We know you're here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I am. Aye. <laughs> Aye. And uh, Commissioner Christian, Christensen is not here, so um, we don't need to point that out continually. <laughs> um, okay. So let's move on then to public hearings. Item five, we'll move uh, 1515 Prospect Avenue to the top of that list. Um, do we have a presentation from staff? And, uh, good evening. Thank you, uh, commissioners and Chair Wilk. The applicant is proposing to amend the previous permit approval to include exterior modifications and a new rear, second story rear store excuse me, rear deck to the residence located at 1515 Prospect Avenue. The previous approval included first and second story additions to the existing 1,500, 1,518 square foot single family residence. The current application complies with all development standards of the R1 zone. And the application, the original application also included details of a new detached 540 square foot accessory dwelling unit which was uh, located in the rear and it was approved under a ministerial permit. The existing residence at 1515 Prospect Avenue is a non-conforming two-story single family residence. The lot is located in the Jewel Box neighborhood and is surrounded by one and two story single family homes. This is the proposed site plan. The amendment would not actually modify the approved building footprints, landscape, or parking. It also wouldn't modify the um, ADU or the landscape plan or the original uh, encroachment permit. So it's really just focused on the some of the exterior to the primary dwelling unit. The proposed second floor plan second story floor plan, excuse me. The new rear deck is shaded in blue towards, towards the north side. A condition has been added requiring the applicant to reduce the rear deck width by two feet in order to comply with the minimum width of the side yard setback of six feet. Are the previously approved elevations proposed today. The previous approval included a design that had horizontal hardy board siding, hardy board fish scale tile at the gable ends, and a new Brava slate tile roof. The proposed elevations and modifications maintain much of the original or the previously approved exterior materials with modifications including changes to first and second story ceiling heights, moving the front deck columns forward, adding horizontal siding to the front second story deck and a new rear second story deck, as well as minor alterations to the windows and doors along the front elevation. The areas shaded in blue represent the new rear second story deck. The applicant is proposing a frosted glass privacy barrier along the north side property line, which is shaded in green. The city received comments from property owners at 1505 Prospect Avenue and of 5055 Garnett Street, citing privacy concerns regarding the proposed rear deck. The properties are located to the south and southwest, respectively. 
we've overlaid the site plan and, and blown up some of the locations of the footprints. The green area that you can see there is the, the deck in question. And the red, the red addresses are the addresses with privacy concerns. Design criteria F requires that the city consider and minimize privacy impacts of adjacent properties with building features such as entrances, doors, and decks. In considering adjacent residences, staff estimated that the nearest of the two residences is approximately 26 feet from the proposed deck. That would be 1505 prospect. With that, uh, staff recommends uh, approval and we can answer any questions that you might have about the elements of the application or the, the deck itself. Thank you, Sean. Um, do any commissioners have questions of staff? Uh, yes, I have one question. Mr. Newman. Um, when I went out there, I did not see the noticing, although it seems like all the neighbors were aware of the application. Was it uh, was a notice uh, placed on the property? Yeah. It, what, did anyone know what happened to it? Uh, yeah. I, I walked by there on Monday, and it was there on Monday. Oh. Okay. Oh, I must have just come down recently. So, but anyway, I, I I'm just uh, asking that because I do believe everyone who is affected by it was aware of the application. Are there any other questions of staff? Um, I have a question. Um, the, it seems to me that there have been a lot of uh, second story decks that are coming before us. And this is as a result of uh, the change in our code which now no longer includes deck decking as part of the uh, floor area ratio. So I was curious, maybe staff could clarify. Can you recall why that why we changed that? What was the rationale for changing that in the in the code? I know I was part of that, but I just can't remember. Uh, Sean, would you like me to answer that? Here, sure. Yeah, Katie, if you if you can remember. Uh, and then we can ask the other members of the commission, but what was your take on that? So my, my recollection of that is that when we looked at, um, at updating our floor area ratio and what would contribute towards floor area ratio, um, we were really looking at massing and considering massing and what, what should be added uh, towards the overall massing on the site. So the idea there was that these, um, second story decks because they don't have a rooftop over them um, that they would not consider be and they're not enclosed it doesn't contribute towards the massing and uh, however we we would require a design permit so that the planning commission could review them and make sure that the concerns associated with the design and privacy and um, you know, all, all of the criteria within a design permit, they would still be required to be reviewed by planning commission, but they would not be limited in size and tied to the floor area. That's my recollection. Is that the commission's recollection as well? Yes, that's basically my recollection. And uh, since the topic's come up now, I was actually gonna ask Katie to um, put on one of our future agendas, talking about the whole issue with second floor decks. And I can bring that up at the end of the meeting, but I think it's, it's something that we need to talk about. That seemed to be very controversial. Um, yeah, let's bring that up again in, in comments, because I'd, be, I'd be curious okay. to know, maybe you can formulate exactly what you'd want to discuss specifically whether or not we want to change the code or what have you um, okay uh so my my understanding of the uh, the privacy issue is is we have this two foot setback on second story it, is it katie is it your uh, impression that was intended to address the privacy issue um or, or 
I'm sorry. Is, is that is this question directed at 1515 Prospect Avenue? Because it might be helpful, Sean, if you could pull up the slide. No, no, it's no. It, it, it's it's a general question because I mean the general question of second story deck and privacy issues comes up on every application. And so in my mind, the thought is, well, you have the two foot setback on the second story. And to me, that's, oh, that perhaps was intended to, to address the privacy issue, but maybe there was, it was a, maybe just a design issue or something. Yeah. Again, I'm not sure the histo history of the two additional two foot setback on the second story. Sure. Um, so within our zoning code, the first story has to be set back 10% of the lot width and the second story 15%. So it's, it, they call this type of zoning like the wedding cake effect of the <laughs> second layer being stepped in. Um, the purpose of that is for articulation in a building. So by having the second story have to be articulated in, within the massing, um, if somebody wanted a flat plane on their on the front of the home they would or on the side of the home they would just have to step it in at the second floor level but it, it really the purpose of that is articulation i don't think the intent of the additional um 15 percent setback on the second story was ever intended as a solution to privacy typically the planning commission will look at windows where they're set within a second story and decks uh to in, to ensure that they're uh, cited correctly to ensure privacy in our dense neighborhoods. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of staff? Okay, um, let's move on to uh, comments, public comments. Does, does the applicant wish to uh, make a statement? And again, what we'll do is we'll limit our comments to three minutes. Um, keep your comments short. If there are uh, a lot of people here, we want to want to close this meeting in time and give everybody a chance to uh, to comment. So, um, Katie, is there uh, other comments? And we'd like to get the applicant the first shot at it so if they have a comment. I I have opened the mic for uh, Peter Shemshoi, and he can speak now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. All right, thanks. Um, uh, if I can, I really would like to go last just to hear what other comments might be. I, as the owner of the property, I kind of like the chance to, uh, to answer any further questions and concerns. I think I've been trying to do that through the whole process. So if you don't mind, I'd love to go last, please. I have no problem with that, Katie. I don't suppose that's a problem with Robert Rule's board or anything. No, that's fine. Let's, let's hope. Okay, let's open it up to general public comments then. Are there any other uh, members of the public who wish to comment on this item? So I'm, I'm looking at the attendees in the Zoom meeting and I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, oh, I do see a hand raised. Uh, let's see. Uh, the name is Managing stress. Oh, <laughs> code name. Sorry, it's Denise Rovai and Anthony Rovai here. Anthony is going to speak on our behalf. Mr. Rovai, go ahead. Oh, hi. So I've been uh, involved in this process since the beginning, and back in uh, April second of 2020, I believe it was when it first came to. Uh, uh, to council, I said I totally approve his his plan, except for I just wanted to make sure that his big flat roof in the back would not become a rear deck. Um, and then the next thing I get is a postcard a few days ago. I saw no other noticing. I have not seen any other plan changes. Um, and now it's like, okay, here this thing is here. And now we're talking a rear deck. Um, you know, I mean, if his main idea was to be able to have a place to sun himself in the backyard, he had a full wide open backyard that he could go and sun himself in, but he decided not to do that. He decided to build the ADU. Um, so he has no space in the backyard to, to sun himself and wants to put it now, um, on the second story in which looks into our living space and our, uh, child's bedroom. 
along with the neighbor's bedroom and bathroom. Uh, it's just, to me, it seems like, you know, the wants of the one is not meeting the, the needs and benefits of, of his neighbors. Um, I also read the letter that um, the neighbors on the other side written for him, and it, it looks like there's a lot of uh, verbal guarantees that are not enforceable. No smoking cigars on the deck. That's not an enforceable. That's a verbal contract. Uh, so I'm like, you know, they wrote a letter to try and be a good neighbor. And I'm sorry. I think that this process, as you guys are noticing, with the second story rear deck is an issue. You know, and... The other thing is, is that, you know, who's going to move in there later? We don't know who's going to move in there. What are their what are their intentions for the decks? So I'm just saying, you know, second story backyard decks are just a bad idea. Um, having them even be available um, put neighborhood stress. You know, I understand Pete wants it. Um, clearly, he knew that I was opposed to it. You know, and he has a ginormous front deck that is quote, non-conforming, which is fine. Hey, great, keep it through there. Um, but he's also asking at that time to increase the size of his non-conforming deck. So it, to me, it's like he gets an approved plan and then he pushes the limit. Oh, yeah, and oh, by the way, now I'm going flip to flip the height of my, my flooring. I don't care, you know, so now he's higher so he can look in easier to the backyard. It just does not, it does not feel good and it does not feel right for our neighborhood. And um, I'm really sorry that it comes to that, you know, I'm all for the community. All right, thank you. Your time is up. Uh, you, you, I think you've made your point. Thank you very much. Uh, any other public comments other than uh, the applicant? Yes, we have Roger Sheehan, and I've, uh, he can now talk. Go ahead, Roger. Roger, please unmute there we go there we go hey guys you're muted again can you hear me now we can okay sorry technical issues here uh thank you council for the opportunity to speak um you know i've 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 known the Shemeshoyan family for quite some time. I also built a home on Garnet Street. Um, I'm familiar with several builds. I've done several builds. And I have been astonished at how clean and, and you know, well organized this project has been from the start. Um, I did see all the notices on, on the property. I've received them in the mail. So I don't know if, if, if there's a, if there shouldn't be any question about knowing that this project was going on. Um, and now looking at the plan in more detail, and believe me, I've read several blueprints like you, and I understand the process. Um, I can't see any way that that deck looks into 1505's yard. It's so far from that that it doesn't make any sense to me. Now, it's, it's just, uh, you know, an elevation and a deck in the way that it's there. I just don't see it. I think there might be some contention and I can feel it in the, in the last conversation. Um, furthermore, one of the things that I noticed was that, um, you know, there seems to be a fence at that corner that's not even conforming um, at that 1505 property. Now, it's not my problem, but I'm just wondering how, you know, one can say one thing versus another in saying that someone's non-conforming. Um, that property fence is, you know, two feet from the street. My point being here in taking that all aside, looking at the plan, I don't see how that that deck is causing any sort of security issue or privacy issue because I've seen some really bad um, deck plans and, and elevation plans, and this isn't one of them. This is a beautiful plan, and I'm surprised. But that's my, that's my uh, you know, thoughts on it, our opinion, and I fully support this project. Thank you, Mr. Shaheen. Eddie, anybody else? Uh, 
I'm not seeing any other hands raised, and I'm gonna check the email now. Um, there is one uh, email that has been received, and it's from Denise Rove, and it says the fence has a variance and is documented at 1505 Prospect. And that's the only public comment that we've received on this item uh, this evening uh, it, through via email. And I'll, I'll check the okay, Zoom shall we? one more time. And we do have another hand up. Oh, no, the hand is down. There was a hand up by Anthony Rovia. Well, we've heard we've heard from Anthony Rovi already. Yeah, yeah, we've heard from him. So we don't want to get into a conversation here. Got it. Um, so if there's no uh, no other public comments, we could take it back to the applicant, Peter Shamshoian. I pronounced that right. Yeah. Peter, you'll have to unmute. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, thanks for your consideration here. Um, so, um, you know, I, I feel I feel for Anthony's situation. I've I've tried real hard to account for private concern, privacy concerns of all my neighbors. In the original design that Anthony uh, referred to, I actually shared the designs with him in detail, and frankly, he said the designs look great. And then at that meeting back in 2020, he objected to a rear deck, even though I told him it was my intention in the future to add one. So. I was really surprised by that, and so that was that was at a time when I had the design with the deck uh, on his side of the property completely exposed to to his windows on his second floor, which are actually halfway back down the property. So I realized that okay, he's not going to go go with that. I moved the deck to the other side of the house and recessed it into the house so it's blocked by a privacy wall, and from his windows on his house, he can't see that deck. It's recessed into the house. On the diagram that uh, Sean showed, his windows are kind of behind the, I think it's the barbecue area there. Um, so about halfway back down the house. And so um, at this point, I'm kind of wondering, you know, I don't, he's not giving me anything really I can try to uh, alleviate. I've done that exercise with both the neighbors behind me and the neighbors to my side that have direct views of this deck. And I've uh, addressed their concerns. I've worked real hard at that. So in Anthony's uh, public comment he puts in, he says he, he, he fears this thing and that his views into his children's room, but his, his, he has two adult sons. They're in their 20s, and so I don't, I don't understand it. Um, I've put a private, I've recessed it into a house to make it private. Um, I actually, if you look at my landscape plan on my build plans, I put uh, place five uh, tall um uh, Emerald green arbitrary uh, plants as a hedge because his second floor windows look right into my ADU bedroom. So I need to put some sort of privacy shield there. My opinion is that we live in tight quarters in Capitola. It's everyone's obligation to work towards privacy and address each other's concerns. You need to take steps to ensure your privacy, work with your neighbors and limit impacts. But Frosted glass, blinds, hedges, they're, they're also ways to mitigate. You can't expect your neighbors to shoulder 100% of the privacy burden. It's a compromise. And the, uh, I, just, I just see it as a, a, a two-way thing. I, I don't think he can see my deck the way it's proposed. It's recessed into the structure. And I do intend to plant a, a shrubbery, you know, tall shrubbery, because I... I have those windows overlooking my yard. When he built his house, I never objected to that because I figured, okay, it's his right to build a house the way he wants. I, I wasn't comfortable with those windows overlooking the yard. Also, I do not get sun in my backyard. The sun is completely blocked by trees and structures. The, 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 the yard sits down in a hole between all the, uh, all the adjacent houses. And so there is no sun back there. The front of the house doesn't get sun after about noon. It's very cold. I just want a small place so I can have a glass of wine with my wife. In the back, I've taken every step to minimize the privacy impacts of it. So if you look at that design, I also sent in a separate uh, email to you uh, showing views from that back wall and uh, 
lines of sight with a detailed diagram of the adjacent houses. I do regret that the other property there on Garnet that they expressed reservations, that, that house is a rental. Those people don't, they aren't reside, they aren't resident there. And the people who rent or rent there, we've never had much issue with. So I, I didn't realize they, uh, they would have an objection. Um, and I, I don't see them around to, to take that to them. So I, I have been very proactive with this. Um, that's about it. I'm I'm just looking for a, a place to retire. I intend to uh, live here the rest of my life. Um, I've owned this house since 2003. At the same time, uh, the Rovides purchased the corner, and I've tried to uh, try, tried to coexist. Uh, again, I modified this plan greatly to move the deck away from their side, and, and I don't know how I could do anything more to alleviate concern. That's about it. Thank you, Mr. Shamshoian. Um, let's move on then to um, commission comments or commission, uh, yeah, commission comments and discussion. Uh, any commissioners wish to weigh in on this item? I see uh, Commissioner Westman's hand raised. Uh, yeah, does Commissioner Ruth want to go first and see pulled the item? Well, I pulled the item because I knew there was some community concern about it, but, uh, you know, I've lived with a rear deck, second floor deck behind my house for several decades. And even though I knew the neighbors well, and it had a five foot parapet wall separating it from my property, it was obtrusive. And uh, fortunately in the remodel, it's gone now, but it was replaced with a four by four window that overlooks my backyard, which I don't know which is worse. But yeah, I think privacy is important and I'm not a fan of second story decks. So I would like to hear from the other commissioners before I decide. Uh, well, I, I pretty much agree. I think that second floor decks become a problem. And um, I don't think decisions that we make should be based on one particular owner who is there now, but as the planning commission, you know, it's our job to look at what gets constructed in our community and how it's going to work for the long term. And uh, for me, I think that second story decks do become intrusive um, you know, even if it's not a visual issue, it often becomes a noise issue. Um, you know, everyone can hear people out there and what's going on. So for me, I, I am having a hard time um, being willing to approve a second story deck in this situation. And I'll hear what my other commissioners have to say. See if I can figure out how to lower my hand. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Did you just call on me? I did. Okay, thank you. Well, first, I need to say one thing by way of preface, which is that we got a, communications from neighbors that, at least for me as a planning commissioner, uh, raised issues that I, I would not consider in uh, looking at something like this, which are, this is not a popularity contest and it really doesn't help me for um, neighbors to weigh in and say that the applicant is a good person or the applicant kicks his dog. Um, basically, I just wanna know about the planning issues. And so I just, you know, I, I just encourage members of the public who want to comment on items to um, try to address the, the planning issues and not just the uh, fact that they like someone or don't like someone. As far as the, the deck issue, I would like our ordinance to provide more guidance than it does. It's a pretty vague standard, um, the design criteria that we have, it really doesn't doesn't help me a lot in solving an issue like this where the applicants and the neighbors have differences of opinion. 
just in my experience as a planning commissioner, as far as uh, decks go, this one is not the most egregious uh, intrusion on privacy that I've seen. It's, you know, it, the, the distance of the neighbors who are concerned from the deck is, uh, you know, fairly significant as these things go, because Capitol is a tight, um, tightly built area. And I, I mean, I think the, the general principle that we're working towards is basically the decks should be treated like rooftop decks, rear decks. Um, and they're in most cases uh, not allowed this is where we're, but that's not what our ordinance really says. So I'm conflicted in terms of uh, action on this item because I think that the neighbors who are concerned about this particular deck are not as closely affected by it as some of the other neighbors who are not concerned. Um, so I'm on the fence, basically, at this point. Uh, Commissioner Ruth, you have your hand raised? Yeah, I just wanted to remind the commission that it's been some time ago, but there was a point in time in Capitola when second story decks that were not in the front were banned. They weren't allowed at all. And, you know, over the ensuing years, that has kind of changed and worked its way into the uh, zoning ordinance again. So, uh, you know, I think we were correct when they were banned and we've kind of moved away from that. And uh, maybe that's the direction we should go back to. Well, my comments are, I'm not conflicted with this. I, I don't think, I don't think this is the, uh, the uh, deck to take a stand on in terms of deciding to change the general plan or the policy about debt. We've approved decks before, uh, rear decks. Um, I, to, to take this to an extreme, you say, well, if you're really worried about privacy and people looking in the backyard, then you just, you wouldn't approve second stories because second stories have windows and windows uh, have viewing opportunities. So to me, uh, again, if, if you wanted to take a stand on rear decks, I would say, let's, uh, you know, let's try to find an example or maybe have staff, as per Commissioner West, Westman's suggestion, come up with some, with some rules or better guidance. Um, I don't think this is the, uh, the uh, application to, uh, to suddenly change our attitude towards rear decks. Like I said, we've approved them in the past, and, um, and, and I think the privacy concerns have been mitigated. And I just don't see that uh, that this is that this is a special case where where we should start suddenly changing our attitudes over. Uh, so, commission, well, I, uh, just to remind the commission also that we have denied second story decks. Uh, the most recent one I recall was up on McCormick Street because of privacy issues. Mm -hmm. And this is Commissioner Westman. For me, I don't think my stand on second story rear decks has ever really changed. I've always considered them to be um, a concern for the neighborhood, uh, if not with this particular resident, but the long-term effects that they can have because something we can't control who is or is not gonna live in those housing units and they change. Okay, I'm ready to hear a motion if anybody wants to throw one out there. Um, I will make a motion to approve the application uh, without the uh, rear deck. Second. Okay, we have a motion by uh, Commissioner Westman and a second by Commissioner Ruth. Uh, any further discussion? Um, I would like clarification. Does staff understand what this motion is? So the application includes some decking, but not the rear deck. What, what are we just, uh, what are we approving? 
Right. My motion is to approve the application as it's been submitted uh, with the conditions that the planning staff has put on the application with uh, having the rear deck itself removed. I don't have concerns about the front deck. Okay. That's what the motion, and that was the second. If there's no more discussion. Oh, there is. Uh, there there's, there's more discussion. Okay, there's go more ahead, Mr. Commissioner Newman. Yeah. The, the, the nature of this motion is a problem for me. And what I'd like to do is propose an amendment to the motion to be voted on first. Okay. And the amendment to the motion is that the, <laughs> see, how do I want to do this? That, that the second story deck be approved. I guess I don't quite understand. Well, because if that's voted down, then I will, I would support your motion. I, so you, I, you, I, want to, you want to make a motion to yeah, approve so, staff recommendation? So it's a subsequent yeah. motion. Subsequent motion. It's not an amendment to the no, motion. No, it is an amendment to the motion because that way, the way the motion's phrased, I can't approve the project without the deck because, I mean, I think we should first vote on the deck and that's the only way I can think of to do it. And then we can approve the project if the deck fails. So you want to... So basically, you're proposing we move, we basically uh, approve staff recommendation. Right. I'm amending the motion to include the rear deck. Well, right. that amendment's not acceptable to me. Um, I'm certainly willing to discuss. Um, well, Commissioner Westman, could you table your amendment and we can vote <laughs> on staff approval first, and then you could come up with a second amendment. Maybe that's a better way to do it. Okay, I, I'm because I want to support certainly support the the basic uh, plan, right? And I can't I agree do that on your motion. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we have a motion to approve staff recommendation as submitted. Do we have a second? I will second it. Chair will second it. So we have a motion by Commissioner Newman and a second by Chair Wilk. Um, no more discussion on this. If not. Uh, um, Louis, could we have a roll call vote? Yes, please. Aye. No. No. Aye. So it's a tie. And as I recall, I mean it's not approved so so the um uh, the motion to approve this application was denied so um I'm so ready. i will make a motion to approve the application with the rear deck being removed from the design and and commissioner ruth do you second i will second Okay, let's discuss this one because I've got some questions. It's this, uh, I guess, the par parliamentary question. So if this gets also denied by split vote, that means we have no motion that has been approved. What happens, Katie, to this application? So both motions would have failed, and it, it's essentially a denial of the application, which could be appealed, though, to the city council. That's not going to happen. Well, it may or may not happen, but uh, okay. So, but if it's approved, at least this thing is approved without the rear deck, and they can actually uh, appeal to the city council whatever we vote on, correct? Correct. So, if they want the rear deck and we deny it, they can always appeal to the city council to overrule our decision. Correct. All right. So we have a <laughs> a motion in a second. We have a roll call vote, uh, please. Before you go to roll call vote, Chair Will, can I ask a clarifying question on the motion? Uh, yes. So there, there's a door leading out to the deck 
in the plan. It would be great within this um, discussion to understand with the Planning Commission if this were passed like those like the doors to be modified to windows and at a certain height. Uh, I'm happy to amend my motion to say that the door going out on the deck needs to be changed to a window um, that's, um, you know, approved by planning staff. But clearly it's intended to be a window, not a door. Do you agree with that, Commissioner Ruth? I do. Okay, with that a motion and amendment, let's call for the roll call vote. Aye. 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 With that, we have a unanimous approval of an amended uh, application. Um, and um, with that, I think we need to move on to our next item. Hmm? That means no sunroom. Oh, no, uh, we have to apply now to put a sun room on. Okay. Um, <laughs> our next item is, oh, gosh, 619 Sunset Drive, which is item for the agenda 5A. Do we have, do we have a staff report on 5A? Yeah, thank you, Chair Wilk. Uh, I'll be giving the presentation for this one. Uh, so at 619, Sunset Drive, uh, we've got a, a design permit for a second story addition, uh, along with the entitlement stack also includes a, a two minor modifications for consideration, one for a, a rear setback and one for a parking space depth for uh, a substandard parking space in the garage. Property is in the R1 zone in the Riverview neighborhood and is a 3,000 square foot rectangularly shaped lot. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the curb view uh, from Sunset Drive, existing uh, single car bay. Uh, I've got a hip roof with composition shingles, a four and 12 pitch and existing stucco. Next slide. This slide is an overview of uh, all the items under consideration tonight, so I'll go from left to right introducing them. Uh, so the rear yard setback is a minor modification uh, to extend in parallel from the first floor upward uh, to the second story at 14 feet 2 inches, where 15 feet would be required uh, in the transparent uh, brown there. That is the, the actual footprint of the second story addition. Looking at the garage, you can see the projection of the kitchen wall um, cuts the, the bay short by also 10 inches. That's a four and a half percent reduction on 20 foot clear. And then not a minor modification, but uh, an item per code that requires planning commission consideration is driveways and parking that uh, are wider than 40% of the frontage. Uh, the proposal here is for uh, a ribbon style parking with two tread strips. Uh, perpendicular to the existing driveway. Existing driveway, just of note, is, is uh, non-conforming uh, for a parking space uh, in that it's about 12 and a half feet deep and 11 and a half feet wide, and uh, just not really any, any opportunity to modify it to, uh, to get anything close to a compliant parking space. Next slide, please. Uh, so looking at uh, the design review aspect, uh, this is a 362 square foot addition on the second floor, uh, matching existing roof slope and materials with the comp shingle. Uh, this is a horizontal cement board lap siding uh, to be painted to match over the stucco. I'll point out the window locations uh, on the front, that's over a, a stairway, and in the rear, there are uh, elevated daylight windows with a sill height above finished floor at about 50 inches, so some care was given there to uh, avoid privacy conflict. Next slide. And so same view uh, of the side. Nothing really really to introduce here other than uh, the windows. 
Again, uh, all actually all of these windows are located either in a bathroom, a closet, or at the top of a stairway. So uh, in the design, the care was given to, uh, to avoid some privacy issues. Next. So with the minor modification analysis, um, we, we actually wanted to get a little further down the line with understanding the, the structural needs. And so uh, we've laid out here just to, to understand uh, the kind of structural upgrades that would be needed. And um, so the, the blue line there represents the existing perimeter foundation. The red line is new uh, footing foundations and shear walls that would be added to support. And then the uh, red squares are new piers and would be uh, tripled up structural framing uh, on the first floor of the house. So, uh, you know, in order to continue that line, ideally, I think in a, in a general sense, when you're laying out uh, a, a new weight on top in the form of a new floor area over the first floor, you want to lay it out as much as you can over the existing perimeter foundation to limit cost and uh, also for engineering purposes. So that's why we wanted to show uh, this slide. Next, please. Uh, getting into the minor modification here that the applicant actually provided a couple of photos. So uh, while they weren't aren't meeting the 20 foot depth, they are actually able to, to functionally use the, the garage. Uh, in also in analyzing this, we, we looked at what the average length of a car is and it's about 15 feet. So, um, you know, other than a modification to that kitchen wall, this is originally built this way and primarily functions as a one car bay. Uh, this project is required to meet parking standard, which is two parking spaces. So reason for the modification is to acknowledge that this is a compliant parking space. Next. And then uh, this is the other parking space. So uh, adapting the front yard to a permeable paver of two, two and a half foot wide tread strips. This is a compliant dimension of a 10 by 20 parking space. And the applicant is uh, upgrading the, the front yard landscaping with some shrubs and flower clusters near the sidewalk and uh, a drought tolerant ground cover between the tread strips and a, a mandarin orange tree uh, closer to the property line. Next. So this is the findings. We did an extensive review of these in the staff report, so I'm not going to really go into this in, in any great detail, but I did want to highlight uh, finding C just because uh, it talks about necessary due to unique characteristics of the property, structure, and use. And so typically if we're looking at a variance, things like the structure or the use wouldn't come into play. Um, although the word necessary does mean that, that the bar should be uh, pretty high for, for justifying these. Um, we also, in, in addressing this finding, looked at the purpose section for the minor modifications. And there's a, a phrase in there that talks about small deviations to accommodate a project that meets the property owner's needs. So in this case, the need is a third bedroom, a second bathroom, and the necessity is to limit uh, demolishing major portions of the building that would involve upgrading uh, structurally and using uh, maybe steel construction methods that are more expensive. Next slide. So with that, we are recommending approval of uh, to these two minor modifications and the design permit. And that concludes the summary. I'd be happy to take questions. Any questions of staff from the commission? Yeah, I have one. Commissioner Ruth. Go ahead. Is the parking in the front yard required uh, for them to meet the parking standard? If, if that parking space is denied, does that mean they can't do the modifications they've proposed and add the second story? Yeah, that, that's correct because the, the parking space in front of the garage is more than a 10%, so it, it wouldn't qualify as a minor modification. Uh, no. I'm not understanding your answer there. The, the simple answer is yes. It would it would uh, make the project not feasible. Okay, so if we deny the parking in the front yard, the project can't proceed. Is that correct then? Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, a follow up to that question. 
what is the depth of the front driveway? 12 and a half feet from garage door to sidewalk. Okay. So just widening the driveway, you'd have two non-compliant spaces as opposed to one. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, let's move on to public comments then. Do we have the applicant or any other public comments? Um, Ryan? Um, Janet Ward would or like Katie? to speak. Janet Ward would like to speak. Okay. Janet, you'll need to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Um, my husband, David Dixon, he is here alongside Hello. me. And I just wanted to um, make a comment in regard to the drive that, you know, I feel like we're actually, you know, enhancing the neighborhood by providing additional parking. The reality is, is that we'll probably continue to use the driveway the same way. Right now, uh, my daughter and her, um, my son-in-law and their baby girl live in the house. And right now, the, they drive, they park in the garage and they park on that 12 and a half foot driveway. I think they're going to continue to use that and we're trying to make that ribbon parking as attractive as possible um, and in the event that we do need to use it if there was a space needed it would get used but I think for the most part um, it's going to just provide quality landscaping and hardscaping to the front yard. I just also wanted to um, say thank you to the Capitol Planning Commission for your time this evening and also to um, Brian Folick and Sean Tosanto for all the support they've given us. Uh, I just want to add that uh, providing the additional parking area does alleviate some issues with that street, which is very narrow, as you know. I grew up on that street uh, and I'm 73 years old. so. Uh, I've been around for a long time, and my grandparents owned that, and my aunt owned it. And so it would be nice to make that front look really, really nice and acceptable and provide an additional space. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comment? I think um, we're concluded. Yeah. I know okay. John, my designer is out there, and um, I'll let... Um, Brian, continue. Well, okay, staff, um, uh, Brian or Katie, are there any other public comments other than the applicant? I do not see any hands raised in Zoom, and I'm now going to the public comment email page, and there are no public comments on the public comment email page. All right, with that, we'll close public comments and move on to commission comments. Uh, is anybody, uh, commissioners, wish to comment on this item? I'd like to move yes. approval of the application. I'll second it. We have approval by council, uh, Councilman uh, Ruth and second by council person uh, Weston. Uh, are there any discussions on the motion? If there are none, let's call for a roll call vote. Uh, Louis, could we have that please? Yes. Councilman Newman. Aye. 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 A motion is approved unanimously. Uh, application is approved. Uh, good luck uh, with your with your project. Let's move on then to uh, the next item, which is 115 Saxon Avenue, item 5B. Um, do we have a staff presentation? Yes, and thank you, Chair Wilk. The applicant here is proposing to convert a flat roof into a second story deck on a single family residence located at 115 Saxon Avenue. The proposed second story deck is located on the side and the front of the property adjacent to residential uses, which is um, requiring a, which requires a planning commission approval of a design permit. This application was previously heard by the commission last November 
and continued pending revisions to address privacy considerations to the adjacent property. The existing two-story residence, as it appears today, surrounded by one and two-story single-family homes in the Depot Hill neighborhood. The existing structure is considered non-conforming because it encroaches into the rear and side setbacks. The applicant is proposing exterior modifications that uh, would convert an existing flat roof into a, uh, into a new second-story deck. You can see it here. Um, Originally, they had proposed a glass wall over the parapet wall there, which is at the edge of the property in, in green, to, and to increase the privacy uh, considerations. They've removed that from this revision and also reduced the size of the deck to an area of approximately 235 square feet. That was down from 342 square feet. Under the zoning code update that went into effect earlier this year, Covered and uncovered exterior spaces, such as decks, do not count towards the floor area calculation. This is a little more of an involved diagram. The property owner of the adjacent residence at 117 Saxon Avenue submitted a public comment citing privacy concerns. Design criteria F requires that the city consider and minimize privacy impacts of adjacent properties with building features such as entrances, doors, and decks. In considering the adjacent property, the applicant submitted a revised proposal that would set the deck area 12 feet back from the, from the shared property line. The original proposal had the deck six feet from the proposed, from the shared property line. That is delineated by a inset railing barrier or that serves as a barrier and the green area is the space that would be not used as a, as a roofed deck, essentially, whereas the blue area is the revised proposal of which would operate and function as a deck. The existing parapet wall was constructed as a first story architectural element and is set back four feet from the side property line, which complies with the first story setback. On the side, you can see an example of the railing they were proposing to inset uh, eight feet into the eight feet behind that, that wall that you see there. To comply with the setback, uh, this would actually more than comply with the second story side setback at 12 feet when the standard is six. Uh, at the top here, you can also notice we, we went out and took photos from the from the top of this roof. And from this position, it's approximately 12 feet from the property line. And that red line is just underneath the top of the neighbor's outer fence, the exterior fence facing the street. This is the proposed elevation. The areas shaded in blue uh, indicate the Sort of the area where you would have exposure um, to the deck, the areas around it where you can see, a, especially in this bottom right area, are, are portions that would not be functional or accessible other than they'd all be behind that barrier. So it would otherwise have a, a limited visual impact on the existing appearance of the residence, except for a new deck doorway and some, some railing post caps. With that, staff uh, recommends approval of the project. Okay, thank you, Sean. Are there questions of staff uh, on this presentation? I have a couple questions of staff. Commissioner Weston. Um, so I was trying to remember because um, I was on the planning commission when this remodel got first approved. And it was my recollection that it was a non-conforming structure and um, they built it the way they uh, did so that they wouldn't have to provide any on-site covered parking. Um, 
And when it came to us and there was this sort of flat roof with a wall around it, um, the, the planning commission was told, well, you know, they, they did that design feature because they were constrained with what they could build and not have to provide parking. Is that correct? And do you remember that? Does staff have any record of that? I would have to look at the the threshold of the previous report to know if it if it would have triggered the um, covered parking, but it, they were also at the maximum floor area ratio limit. So having a a deck would have exceeded that under the previous zoning code. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm are there any other questions? We um, I have a comment, or uh, I guess it's a question. When we heard this here, I think it was what, last November, uh, we continued this item so the applicant and the neighbors could reach some kind of agreement on privacy. And it appears that agreement hasn't been reached. Am I correct in that? Um, Commissioner Ruth, you, you are correct in that, but um, you had asked that staff work with the applicant and the neighbor, and um, we did meet with the neighbor, and we met with the applicant. In the end, we can't force the two parties to come to an agreement. It, that's really, it, it's up to the decision of the Planning Commission. So we did meet with the neighbor. We um, understood their concerns clearly and express those to the applicant. The applicant modified their plans. Um, we actually saw two different um, two different drafts. The first draft, I think they moved the um, the the wall in between uh, Sean Crip, was it an additional two feet, I think. So at that point it would have been eight feet from the property line. And we met with them and we said, we really don't think that's addressing the planning commission and, or the neighbor's concerns at that point. There, it's still, from that point, you could visually like, look into their yard. Um, so then they came back with the current proposal as you're seeing it. And prior to making a recommendation, um, we, Sean visited the site and as he stated in his presentation, stood on the roof to ensure that from that location of where they were proposing the divider that they could no longer see into the yard. Uh, it, it was not practical to get to try to get both uh, of the neighbors into the same room together, but we did meet with them separately. Hey, thank you, Katie. You're welcome. I have a question slash comment. Go ahead, Commissioner Newman. Okay, so um, when this item was heard uh, previously. I mistakenly uh, did not participate actively in the decision to continue it. Uh, I have followed the uh, genesis of this application and I am qualified to participate in it, so I will participate in it. Thank you, Commissioner Newman. Um, I have a question of staff. Could you bring up the plan view of this application? My concern is based on our ruling on 1515 prospect, I'm wondering how this is gonna go. So uh, <laughs> the drawing, yeah, okay, I guess that's good enough. So let's see. That, so the revised, if we were to, based on the earlier ruling, if we were to deny the side deck entirely and only approve a deck on the, in the front of the house, there's a door there, right, that basically goes out to the side of the house so that if they were to access a front deck, they'd nevertheless have to go out that side door, correct? If you're referring to where the, the proposed access to the deck is, yes. at the top of the stairs right here, and that's the side of the house. Correct. 
So if we were to approve a front deck, they would nevertheless have to access it by some sidewalk or some mini deck on the side of the house, right? Barring putting a new doorway in. Uh, so no matter what, they would need to construct a doorway somewhere because there isn't currently one. But, uh, the, but there's a staircase in between the master bedroom and the stair, the top of the stairwell. So those are really the only places you likely find a, a new doorway opportunity. So I'm looking, I'm looking at this, uh, I'm looking at the front, what, what what I'll call the front deck. And it looks like maybe there's a window there at the top of the stairs. If you go straight up the top of the stairs towards the front of the house, is that could that be converted into a doorway and and then have direct access to a front deck and eliminate side deck entirely? You know, I, I don't think it readily meets the dimensions of a of a door frame. It's it's a somewhat raised window. It's a, a very wide window. But well, I guess where I, what I'm getting at is if, if if we're now suddenly not liking rear decks. And I, I would assume that we also don't like side deck for the same reasons. In that case, I would say, well, we could nevertheless approve this based on the side deck being just a walkway, which is maybe only two feet from the house, and that would have a railing all the way until you got to the front deck. Is that something that sounds feasible? I mean, currently they're going to have this door at the not the top of the stairs, but the, at the landing, I guess, right? I, I guess I, I'm confused. I, I, okay, there. It, it, can uh. you see this uh, pencil? If I are you saying if there was a line like this, a walkway? Yeah. To this front area here. Well, I don't think we should be. I, we should be modifying the design. If I'm this, just wondering what I'm just wondering what's feasible. If we were to approve a roof deck, I mean, would that even is is that is that a ridiculous approval is i mean the front deck is i'm just wondering if that's a feasible thing to approve a partial deck or not and if the plans don't allow it then then you just deny the whole thing but if you if you can do like susan did before approve half a deck we want to make sure that's at least doable right and that's so that's my question is it doable and uh, it doesn't seem to me it's that clear, so I'll just withdraw my question and, and move on to public comment. <laughs> so uh, let's do that. Are, are there any comments on this item uh, from the public, Katie, that we can, or Sean, that we want to uh, entertain? Yes, there is public comment from uh, John Shank, and he had sent in a letter earlier that you all have received and read. Um, I did notice that he resent it through the public email as well, but we won't read through that. He's here to speak tonight on. Um, All right, and we have the three minute Zoom. limitation on any comments. So uh, Mr. Shank, welcome. Thank you, Chair Newman and commissioners and staff. I'll try to go quickly here. Um, I, I'm long, I've got a lot to say, and the letter was long because our concerns are significant. Um, I am John Shank, and my wife and I are the owners of the two homes that are on one lot that are adjacent to this side yard. We did share our deep concerns at the prior hearing and did submit the letter to you earlier with a lot of the details. I, I want to point out, because I was curious as I've been doing my research on these things, you know, why are we... Why is the design permit, you know, why, is, why the process? And it's because, and I did highlight this last time, council, as they considered allowing these roof decks, expressed great concern, you know, for pr protecting privacy, you know, when they're proposed, and their, their highest level of concern was for side yards. And here we are, and, you know, it's appropriate that you guys uh, share my concern or share our concerns for the protection of privacy. I find it informative that the staff report earlier tonight for just the prior item discussed in the design permit, you know, uh, highlights there. I think there are just a few sentences 
And one of them was that pointing out that the second story windows along the rear and south side elevations are small and raised. This is a quote, you know, which limit the privacy impacts to adjacent residential properties. The same point was made when this house was approved back in 2017, I believe, that the side windows were, you know, they work to elevate, make them smaller and do these sorts of things to protect privacy. And, and, and the privacy goes both ways and that was appreciated. And I, I, I think that your, what I perceived is your collective concern over privacy issues is should remain and we don't throw it out the window because there's you know uh, as as one of you pointed out you know not necessarily perfectly clear language here in the in the zoning for when and how these things should be permitted and i'm i'm talking about second floor roof decks because of the concerns and i also you know take exception to the to the staff's recommendation here obviously because I think, you know, to think we've solved privacy, and I'm using air quotes here on privacy, because at a single point, somebody standing five and a half feet above an unfinished surface can't see into the yard. That's not, that's not a privacy test in my mind. Privacy is so much more than just visual. And by the way, if we were to, if Sean were to, you know, have walked to his left and looked over the side into the yard, but without the benefit of the screening existing parapet wall he you know it, you would see in and i imagine if he goes to what i think chair wilk was pointing out as being the front portion of this proposed roof deck you would then look back at the property again be visible again up on the second floor without a screen so i right, challenge need to finish up quickly you bet the findings a b d e and f i i just i'm i'm unable and I, I hope you all would discuss them if you're going to move forward with this to document how how those findings can be made i thank you i'm happy to answer questions if that's appropriate at all um but i will be listening in thank you thank you mr shank um are there any other comments from the public i see um the applicant is here danielle wise but she does not have her hand raised but i'm sure she's available for questions um, I'm going to um, allow, okay. her, allow her to talk. If she can unmute herself if she'd like to, or, but otherwise. She's certainly welcome to speak if she wishes to. No, I'm okay, but thank you. I'll happy to answer any questions. All right. If there are no more public comments, we'll bring it to the commission for questions and comments. Um, do any commissioners wish to speak on this item? Just a, a question for you, Commissioner Wilk. When you when you spoke of the of the front deck, that's still all. That's not a separate deck from the deck we're discussing. That's all part of one deck. Correct. 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 Okay. Um, so I've got a, a general question for the. <laughs> The commissioners here and and that is uh, are, are we going to do the same thing on this as we did on 1515 in which case um, if there's a motion I just assume the motion be to approve staff recommendation and then we can amend it from there um, but you know let's let's hear what does everybody think about this other questions comments general tendency to approve or disapprove uh, Commissioner Westman has her hand raised yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I was involved in the process when this remodel was originally approved. And the Planning Commission had great concerns about that area being used as a deck. And I believe, um, and I'm going by memory, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that the Planning Commission put a condition in there that they changed the window they were proposing to be a smaller window so it didn't look like a door, and that this area was not supposed to be used as a deck. And um, uh, for me, that's what we approved when the remodel was done. And I understand that um, you know the zoning ordinance has now changed, 
and we don't count this as square footage, so it won't have any impact on them having to provide parking now. Um, but for me, uh, I think I'm going to stick with what the Planning Commission originally did in 2017 and, and say that this area shouldn't be used as a deck. Thank you, Commissioner Westman. Any other comments? Commissioner uh, Newman, you're gone off mute. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to your question about uh, modifying the deck. <clears throat> I think if, if the commissioners wanted to go that direction, that what we would probably want to do is just uh, either continue it for modification or deny it and let the applicant figure out their own uh, proposed uh, revision rather than try to uh, come up with something that that might work as far as but I'm not saying that's the direction I necessarily want to go on this I think it's it's really the same issue as we already had which is balancing the interests of the two neighbors based on a standard which is uh, vague and um, uncertain to me so I have the same problem I had with the other one, which is what criteria do I really use to decide whether or not enough mitigation has been made by moving it back the number of feet that they did. Um, I, I agree with your procedure. I think we should first see if the application as proposed, the approval as proposed by the staff will um, pass or not, and then uh, move on. I'm going to go ahead and make that motion then. We can all discuss it. Well, I'd like to hear what the other commissioners have to say. Well, there's only one more. Commissioner Ruth, would you <laughs> <I'd> like <laughs> to speak? Oh, well, I'm kind of torn on this one, but I, <clears throat> I just feel that we have to look at these in the long term. And I just don't see any guarantees that that deck at some point in time is not going to be expanded to include the whole roof area. Um, you know, the design lends itself to that, and uh, I just have reservations about it. Well, I guess my final comment is I also had those reservations, but I thought staff did a, did a good job of researching this and eliminating sight lines and then putting conditions in the in the approval. That would uh, that would prohibit uh, the further expansion of that deck, at least legally. So, yeah, I'm a little bit torn, but I, I tend to lean towards approval. So, with that, uh, does anyone want to throw out a motion? No motions. <laughs> <laughs> no motion. Well, I'll move approval then. A staff recommendation. I will second. Any further discussion? All right, let's vote on it. Uh, Louis, can we have a roll call? Yes, yes. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Ruth? No. Commissioner Westman? No. Commissioner Westman? Aye. Uh, split vote. Uh, that means that the uh, application is denied. And if there, <laughs> I guess that's it. I'm sorry, uh, the applicant. And uh, um, let me just ask uh, just a general question. I don't know if this is really to, to order, but I would like to like to uh, get an understanding since we seem to be breaking new ground here on the on the decks. So I'd like to get a, an opinion of the commission commissioners. The issue with the, the roof the roof decks are second story decks in the backyard and the side yard. Again, it has to do with privacy and viewing into other people's yards. And therefore, when it comes to front frontage decks at the front of the house, since those tend to look mostly on the street, commissioners in general would be more likely to approve those. Is that is that a fair assessment? I think so. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah, I would agree. Right. I just want to get a get a sense of where we where we're heading as a group here. Okay, that's it. We'll uh, move on to the next item then.
uh, which is item C, 5C, report on citywide alcohol sales. Go ahead, staff. Yeah, just a second while we get the slideshow up. Okay, thank you, uh, Chair Will. And uh, this item is before you, um, prompted from the November 4th Planning Commission meeting of last year. Uh, the Commission expressed some interest in just exploring a more of an overview of permitting for alcohol sales and, uh, and just the broader process of how we, we handle these. Uh, so we've got a brief report here of some permits that we've issued recently. Uh, on the next slide, please. So in the last three years, we've issued six conditional use permits for uh, a mix of on and off-site sales. We've got one in the pipeline that is uh, scheduled tentatively for the February 3rd Planning Commission meeting. Um, and we've also got uh, a table here showing you for on-site sales, we've got 57 total in Capitola and for off-site 22. And we provided a ratio of, of that to uh, the rounded off population. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So in terms of process, uh, all of these go through a conditional use permit. Um, the only real except, well, when they're new, they go through a conditional use permit process. When they're a transfer uh, ABC verifies with with the city that there is a, a use permit on file in good standing. Uh, so the bullets there, I don't need to go through those, but uh, so it's a case by case review. Uh, we've got to make the findings for use permit and, and the bullets explain what we usually look for. Uh, the ABC is kind of, you know, the state's process, another layer. Uh, they at certain points in their process defer back to either planning or the police department. Um, and an applicant can't really move forward, whether it's a, a transfer or a new uh, at a certain point, unless there's a local sign off. There's also a posting and noticing process for ABC. You'll see uh, posters and windows, so they solicit feedback with that as well. Uh, in collaboration, putting the staff report together and exploring uh, the citywide alcohol sales, um, we worked with the police department, and uh, Captain Sarah Ryan is graciously uh, joined us this evening. She's on, on the phone. Uh, she informed us that uh, the police review things like service calls and arrest history when they're reviewing these. And um, they have oftentimes an option to not renew. Uh, as well, I, I'd point out that that's the enforcement mechanism with a conditional use permit is planning commissioner or the community development director could always call up a conditional use permit for a re-review of a new impact that was never analyzed is uh, suddenly coming from a use like this or they're not operating under their their conditions. So there is some back-end enforcement, but on the front end, uh, these are handled case by case. So um, with that, uh, both planning and Captain Ryan are available for questions. Thank you. Uh, are the I have some questions, uh, but I'll let the uh, uh, rest of the uh, commission uh, weigh in first. Are there any questions of uh, staff or the police chief? Uh, uh, go ahead. Raise my hand. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I, go ahead, yeah. Commissioner Weston. Yeah, I just wanted to thank staff for uh, bringing this information to us. Um, the, I thought the report was pretty informative and helpful at least for me, and um, I appreciate them taking the time to do it. Um, and that's my comments. Okay, any other hands raised? Um, I have a comment. Go ahead, Commissioner Newman. Which is uh, basically to echo uh, what I just heard from Commissioner Westman, but I, I don't recall ever having uh, received a report like this in the past. Maybe I was uh, not paying attention at the time, but uh, is this the first time we've done this? 
Well, I think this actually probably comes based on my question when we approved the English ales application. So I can give you the, my rationale for why I, why I stressed some concern, and that was, you know, the village in particular has a lot of bars and restaurants, and we, we've been approving, you know, obviously on Esplanade there's, there's a lot of bars and restaurants, but then we kind of let that spill into the, the, to the mercantile and the, the, the pizza joints there are now serving beer and wine and then English ales now brought in Capitola Road as, a, as now another place. So the, my question was, well, is there any guidance in the general plan or, or in general where we wanted had a mix of retail versus, uh, you know, alcohol serving or restaurants? I mean, do, do we would be okay to have the entire village convert from retail into bars and restaurants? Is there a keep out zone? We want to have, you know, so many yards from a nearest residence. Is you know, uh, it seemed to me that there, you mentioned not, not enough guidance on balconies. I didn't think there was enough guidance on on, appro- on the commission uh, approving alcohol sales. So I was, I was hoping to get some more clarification on what guidance we did have. Now I remember that you, you requested uh, this information. I did, and, and I, I don't think that I have any more guidance now. And I, and I guess I'm okay with that. So... You know, I don't think it's it's really a, it's gotten to a crisis level or anything. I just wanted to know if we had more guidance when, say, the play, the, the shop next door to, to English Ale says, hey, this is a good idea. I want to have a beer license, too. You know, well, is there any reason not to keep approving them? When I lived in Palo Alto quite a few years ago, there was a section of the city that was called Liquor Gulch. So maybe that's what you're... Well, I think we already into. have that. It's like Esplanade is like, oh. you know, <laughs> bar way or whatever you want to call it. And I just want, hey, we want to have uh, Capitola Road become Liquor Gulch. <laughs> and, and I guess I'm okay with that. Hey, I enjoy a drink as well. As Capitola, <laughs> so if we don't have any guidance, then we'll just handle it a case at a time. That's fine. <laughs> All right. With that, I guess. Katie, go ahead, Katie. Would, would you like to hear from uh, Captain Ryan? tonight she's joined us and she's she's done so much work in our village over the years um, and has seen how this process the process that we have in place works and how they have um, the ability to pull back on permits if there are problem um, businesses down there so I think where Sarah is uh, Captain Sarah Ryan are you available to speak I'm here um, I'm hello commissioners Katie Brian um, can you guys hear me okay? We can. Yes. yes, thank you, Captain. Okay, I'm I'm heading up to South Lake Tahoe, and I've I've hit snow, and so um, my 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 service is just a little spotty, but I'm I am here, um, so I missed a little portion. I just was able to jump back into the call. Um, yeah, a long history of keeping an eye on the village. I was hired. I mean, just not to get into my whole bio, but hired in 2005, 2006, Chief Ely appointed me to the village because I had a lot of rest came in with bartender and restaurant business experience um, to fix a lot of the alcohol related issues that have been going down there on down there. So, you know, 2006 to now, there's been a lot of really solid partnership with ABC. Uh, We don't arbitrarily uh, sign off on entertainment permits. We've been known to, um, to, to suspend them when calls for service, provide data that their alcohol related crimes are on the rise and it's an issue. So, um, I mean, currently right now being that it's January, all the Esplanade bars and the restaurants are, are currently, you know, submitting their entertainment permits. Um, and a lot of information gathering goes into that on my end, um, as I embrace this new role as a captain, really looking at statistical data and reviewing calls for service, any reports, arrests, all of that, all of that information is um, taken into account before we before we okay anything. Because on the back, I mean, as we know, I mean, on the back end, we're going to end up dealing with it if we sign off on something that is irresponsible. Um, so that's that's the approach that that we take, and it's been very proactive and been beneficial in terms of keeping the village, the village in particular, because it is a high concentration of bars and restaurants safe. Um, from the outcomes that we all know that sometimes alcohol consumption can lead to. 
you also uh, take into account neighbor complaints of noise? Yes, um, that's another component. Um, good question. So noise is, is a huge thing. We have mm-hmm. a lot of residential and vacation and, um, you know, things going on in the village. And so absolutely that those are actually conditions that are placed on entertainment permits with guidelines and um, and then they're they're monitored throughout the the duration of the entertainment permit. Um, we also have access to ABC grants. We've partnered with them a bunch to do compliance checks. Sometimes we've done stings if we are hearing that there's something that needs to be looked into from more of a covert um, approach. So yeah. The, the noise and consumption and also underage drinking, that, that's another thing. We, we, we um, are really active when it comes to that, too, and uh, over-serving. Have you been asked to uh, get it, give any input into the upcoming outdoor dining ordinances? I personally have not, um, but... Uh-oh, we're losing you. I mean, <laughs> That's moving forward. I oh oh do you hear do you hear me now? We can hear you. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think you've answered the question. The answer is no. You haven't had any uh, input on that. Uh, maybe you will be asked that sooner or later. Oh, bummer. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Captain. You know, for for those of us that were around back in the '80s and '90s when Live yeah, entertainment was allowed to continue I'd until. To, I'd love to uh, join. Okay, I, I think I think we're we're happy with your response so far. Thank you, Captain, and uh, we'll so, put you on mute. <laughs> so just yeah, to continue when live entertainment was allowed until one o'clock in the morning in the village. Uh, between those days and now, it's like night and day, a world of difference. <laughs> okay. I was involved, part of the council, when we had the lawsuit, when we changed the entertainment uh, permits from 1 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night, and uh, went to court on that, and the city won. So we were sued by the owner of the Edgewater at the time. Well, okay. <laughs> Good history. Um if there's nothing else on this, we can move on then to the director's report. Yeah, um, no director's report tonight. I gave you all the updates uh, during staff communication. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, then we'll move on to item seven, commission communications. Um, Commissioner Westman, I know you wanted to speak again on this topic. Uh, yes, just simply to reiterate, I would like to see uh, staff bring back to the Planning Commission the issue of second story decks and some history about why we decided not to include them in the floor area ratio. Happy to do Thank so. Thank you. Well, that is, is that I would like clear, Katie. Go ahead, Commissioner Newman. Oh, I, w- I would uh, suggest that we expand that inquiry further into uh, modifying the or propose, suggesting that the city council consider some modifications to the ordinance to um, to add some criteria to make it easier for the planning commission to deal with applications on second story decks. That's a, that's a great suggestion. So is that something that staff would come up with is a series of proposed modifications to the code based on the input you've gotten you've gotten from us on the last two rulings you have enough information to come up with some proposals yeah I I think what I'm hearing is that uh, you'd like some objective design standards that are tied to second story decks uh, and and really we might want we might want to look at what other uh, jurisdictions have done with that and uh, I'm not sure exactly how to improve the ordinance in that regard, but I think it's worthy of discussion. Yeah, so I think that's a good idea to have some other, do some research on some other uh, uh, municipalities to see how they've handled it. 
That sounds good. We'll, as we'll part of the presentation. As, a, as kind of a work session item for the Planning Commission. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other commission communications? Not. I just want to thank you for electing me chair. <laughs> and, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and, and with that, uh, we'll adjourn. Good night, <laughs> Good night everybody. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, there you go.